Hey guys, so next up we're going to tackle AI and how to get them to move around the map and shoot at you. Uh, I've got set up some path nodes in my scene already. And I've just placed them uh, quite symmetrically around this uh, cube um, shaped area and just to make sure the bot can uh, patrol his way through the level. I'm going to have him spawning up here and then following this path of nodes along and uh, as you can see in the top down viewport I've got them all spaced out pretty evenly. So uh, we can jump into Kismet first uh, by opening your Kismet window and we'll select the, the node that you want the bot to spawn at. I'm going to spawn him inside this doorway here. I think it's always nice to make believable spawning points, you know, behind doors and stuff like that, rather than just spawning in um, an open space. Uh, so, you know, try and include that into your maps. Uh, so I've got my spawn point selected and I'm just going to, in Kismet, I'm going to right click, go to New Action, Actor, Actor Factory. And this is quite a powerful tool. Uh, it can spawn lots of different types of things, but for now we'll just use it for AI. So the first thing we want to do is on spawn point, with our spawn point selected, I'll just right click here and new object by using path node, uh, whichever number that will be in your map. And then we'll change a few settings inside the actor factory. So if I just make this a little bit bigger for you to see. Uh, the first thing we want to do is this drop down blue arrow, create new object, we'll click this and go to UT Actor Factory AI. There's another AI further up the list, but make sure you choose the UT Actor Factory AI. And then with it clicked, uh, we've got factory uh, settings here. You can expand this um, space here if you can't see any of these options. And the first thing we'll do is in the pawn, pawn class, uh, we'll give him a pawn class of UT Pawn, which is just um, towards the bottom of the list. Uh, you can change your control class to UT Bot, but uh, in my experience it doesn't really change too much for this, this specific example, but I'll change that anyway. And then I'll also take Give Inventory AI, Give Default Inventory, sorry, and uh, add to the inventory list, and I'll give him a shock rifle. So all we've done here is check default inventory, uh, added a new item, pressing that green tick, and just cho chosen a shock rifle from those settings. And that's about all we need to change in this actor factory so far. So if we just go ahead and throw in a level loaded event by going to new event, level loaded, and we'll just hook that up there. Making sure you've rebuilt your paths if you've only just placed them. And then if we right click and play from here, we should be able to spawn a bot. So as you can see, we've got a bot here. It's not got any behavior right now, but we can see he's got his shock rifle in his hand and we know he's alive and moving and stuff like that. So now we can start giving him some properties on how to actually shoot at the player and move around the level. So the first thing we'll tackle is how to get him shooting at the player. And you can do this with new actions inside of AI and we've got start firing app and stop firing app. But these these um, haven't got the, the fullest amount of control that we'd like in the scene. We can pick those straight off, but what I'll do first is I'll go into MISC and I'll select Trace from MISC. And what this does is it creates a trace between me and the bot. And it's saying, you know, if, if he can see me, then start shooting. But if not, then uh, don't start shooting. Because if you select start firing out straight away, he'll just start trying to fire all around the scene and it won't be too believable. So the start will create as the bot. So on the spawned, we'll create a new object variable from spawned here. And we'll give him a var name of bot. So now we've got a name vari a variable here with a var name of bot. So on the start, we can hold down the N key on your keyboard, the named variable N. And we'll, in the var properties, we'll type bot. So if all is correct, we've got a tick box here and bot is speaking to bot. Alternatively, you could hook this up to there, but our sequence is going to get extended further down here. So we want to kind of create create a clean, clean interface here. So uh, to start off with, the end is the player. So we can hold down P and left click, and that creates an all players variable. And we'll just uncheck all players for player zero. And so if he's not obstructed, now we can start firing at the player, choosing AI start firing gap. So we'll hook that up into there. Okay. And then once we start firing at the player, we'll add a delay in there. It's always good to add delays into AI movement just so it gives them time to calculate their actions. 
So after a one second delay, then we can stop firing out in AI, stop firing. So let's hook up the targets. Um, the target would be the bot, and then we start firing at the player there. And then stop firing would be bot as well. So what we've got here, if we just take it step by step, after we've spawned, we do a detection. Can we see the player? If there's nothing obstructing, for example, a pillar, we'll start firing at the player. We'll fire at him for one second, and then we'll stop firing. Okay, and so we'll add another delay in there after stop firing, and then we'll add another trace. Okay, so the properties of the trace are the exact same, but we'll add another name variable. So I'll hold down N and create a bot here, and player zero will be the end. Okay, so starting from the beginning, uh, we've got a trace, you know, going through the start firing, stop firing, and now this is the trace that we want to start looping because uh, we can't loop this initial trace because we've got the, the properties afterwards. So after this trace, if we're not obstructed, we'll start firing at again. Okay, and if we are obstructed, we'll stop firing. Okay. So now this is this section here is the looping sequence. This is the initial trace here, and this is the looping sequence. One thing we do need to change though is on trace we'll add a delay above the trace because if it's not if it is obstructed, then you know we still we, we have no action to fire off that. So if we're obstructed, we'll start a delay. Um, this can be 0.2 or 0.5 or something like that, and then after finish we'll send it back to the input. And what this is doing is, if there's a pillar in the way of the, the player, then you know we'll do another check. And it'll keep checking until we're not obstructed and then we can start firing at the player. Okay, so this is the looping sequence here, if we select these. This is um, the looping trace uh, after they're obstructed. And so far, everything should work um, well. So if we just go into the level and play from here, our bot is actually shooting and firing at us. So that's good, even if we run out of place and we jump around, if he can see us, then he'll start firing. So that works for now. So now we need to get him moving outside of this doorway into the level, navigating around and, and trying to kill us. So we'll bring our, our sequence back into play here and just below it, what we'll do is we'll right click, new action, AI, and move to actor. And this will tell, this basically acts as, you know, you move this guy around in the level uh, to a certain destination. So from our finished output, we'll go to the in of the move to actor. And in our level, we'll click on one of the path nodes and right click, select, and we'll select all path node actors. As we've only got them in this area, this will work out uh, just fine. So it's a quick and easy way to uh, select them all. So on in your Kismet, right click on destination and new object bars using path nodes and that will add them all into there. So all these destinations have now been added into the move to actor. Okay, the look out of this will be the player. So when the bot's moving around, he'll want to be looking at the player. Change it to player zero again, like we've done previously. And the target will be the bot. So we'll create another name variable by holding down N, left clicking and we'll call this bot, okay? And so the next thing we need to do is we don't just want him to move once, kind of like in our, in our trace sequence, we want a looping element of the, of the director. So we'll, from the finished output, we'll hold D and left mouse click, and that'll create a delay. You can leave it at one second, one second delay is fine for this. And we'll also create another move to actor. So under AI, move to actor, and we'll do the exact same as what we did here. So the target will be the bot. So we can just use that same variable. Look at the player again. And the destination will be all these path nodes. And instead of selecting them all again, what we can do is we can right click on this destination, copy the connections, and paste them. 
So that's an easy way to copy and paste those. Uh, and now we need a de delay function in here so that we can keep moving to the actor and you can continuously make him move around the level. So we'll hold D again on finished and that'll create a, an output. And from the finished, we can go back to the in. So this is now another looping sequence where uh, once we've spawned, we tell him to move to any one of these path nodes here. So if we just comment those, they are destinations. So any of those, he can pick randomly, whichever one he's closest to, he'll move to, okay, while still looking at the player. And then while he's running, he'll be thinking of the next move to actor and pick one, another one of these destinations, and then he'll begin the sequence again. So it'll become a continuous uh, loop of finding destinations and moving to them. So that along with the trace should allow our bot to um, move around the level and shoot at the player as well. So if we just test that out now, Now we've got a bot running around the level, running to the different path nodes, finding his way around the level and shooting at us. And you know, it creates a bit of a challenge because he can run into all the different spaces. And that looks like it works for now, so that's good. Uh, just jumping back into the Kismet, the main things you need to remember is it's always good to have a looping sequence. Uh, just make sure that it's not a complete um, infinite loop. Uh, so in this example for the obstructed we wouldn't just hook that up to the end because the way the Unreal Engine calculates things that would do it a couple of million times a second or however quick the processing happened so that would create some kind of lag so we only need it going at about 0.2 of a second, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, um, 0.2 is a low enough thing just to make it do them, um, that amount of calculations a second so it's good to have a delay in the tray sometime you can of course right click on output and set your own active delay at 0.2 and that's instead of using that delay but just for a visual purposes it's easy to see those delays so I'll just change that back to zero and so then we start firing out so we have our first trace in here but then we want to loop the trace back around so if he is uh, obstructed then you know we'll Put it back into this first delay here to stop firing because we don't want him firing when they're obstructed and then the not obstructed would be the start firing up because you know he's not obstructed he can see the player so we want to start firing up so that is your looping trace we we'll just comment that and this one would be the initial trace okay so we've got just in recap we've got an axis spawning We've got use UT pawn and UT bot, and we've given him a shock rifle. Uh, we've given him a, a very var name of bot so that we can reference him further on in the sequence to, to create a less clutter of wires. Uh, we've also spawned him at a path node behind a door. Uh, and then we've got the initial trace, whether he can see the player or not. And if he can see the player, then we start firing at him. Uh, then we stop firing and check to see if we can still see the player. And if we can still see the player, we'll start firing out. And if we can't see the player, we'll stop firing out. And then the trace happens over and over until, you know, when he can see the player, he will start firing. And then on our move to actors, uh, we've got the initial destination here. This is where he first moves to. And he picks one of these points uh, in the level to move to. And while he's moving, he's looking at the player. And so he can still be shooting at the player. Uh, and then he finds the next destination, which will be another um, place closest to his path node. And then with another delay in there, we'll loop back to the beginning. So he's continuously moving around the level and shooting the bot. So that, that's a nice, easy setup for detecting the player and where he's um, moving to. Uh, and yeah, thanks.